Hey guys, this is John from Laser Ninja Productions, and I'm out at uh, at uh, Alamo City Comic Con 2017, um, running a laser marquee for the people coming into the event. So, uh, what I figured I'm going to do is kind of do a very, very different kind of tutorial. Um, I'm in a kind of a unique situation. I just sold off all of my really high-powered lasers. Um, so, with the laser marquee, I needed to bring out a couple two and a half watt lasers that I'm actually double stacking and aligning uh, so I can get somewhat more brightness than I would with just a single projector. So this is a trick I learned uh, from way back in the day when I used to work with three gun um, CRT projectors and we would not only have to align all three of those people are excited for this tutorial, what can I say? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a, a trick I learned back in the day when not only would we have to align all three guns on the CRTs, but we would also double stack those. Um, something still useful for like DLP projectors if you've got um, a crosshatch pattern and can do geometric correction. So let's take a look at this. First step, um, we're taking a look at the uh, projection zone configuration dialog inside of Pangolin and Beyond. Um, we, the two zones that I'm going to be focused on here are the main graphic zone and the scanner 2 main. Uh, those are the two zones that I'm going to be overlapping with each other. Um, what I want to first do is select the, uh, the alignment configuration or the alignment test pattern uh, for both the main graphics and for the scanner 2 main. If I look at the, uh, the back wall, I can actually see where my two patterns um, are projected on the wall. Now the first step is to align the centers of the two, um, the two images. So I'm on, you know, my two zones that I'm using here are the main graphic zone and scanner two. Now I'm already set to position. I've already adjusted the relative size. I want my second scan zone to be slightly larger than my first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the position and get the centers to line up as much as possible. So you're going to start to see the centers come together. And we'll kind of fine tune this in here. So I now have my one center line. Now I'm going to adjust the left and right. And this isn't going to be perfect. I'm going to adjust this when I get to fine tuning. Uh, geometric correction with the crosshatch pattern, but the center X and the numbers are now roughly center. You can see that scan zone 6, which is scanner number 2, is slightly larger than scan zone 1, which is exactly what we want. so that I have my four corners. And I'm gonna have the four corners match to the side. So because my lower right corner is the trickier of the two right now, that'll be the first one that we line up. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing on the lower left corner. Adjust this guy, and this time I'm gonna use the keyboard to dial this in. Well, this time I'm actually going to drag it a little bit with the mouse so it's slightly lined up and then I'm gonna fine-tune it with the keyboard now same thing with my top left and my top right corner we're gonna select the point 
We're going to eyeball it in with the mouse get it into roughly the right position, and then we are now going to walk it in with the keyboard. The idea being that you want the dots in the corners to line up as much as possible. We're not too worried about the full side alignment because we will adjust those when we get to the actual detail points um, when we move to the cross tab, or cross touch. And now the last one is going to be the top right corner and we will walk this guy in, walk this guy in, and we've got a good ballpark approximation. Now that we've got all four corners matched up, now we're gonna come over and change from our basic alignment to our crosshatch. Now we have a crosshatch on all four corners. Come back to my secondary scanner, we could take a look here. And the idea is you can see that we've got a lot of, uh, well on the camera it looks like there's a lot of flicker, but um, and actually that's not too bad. Um, but we'll we start with the one by one. Um, pattern and that will give us a chance to fine-tune our corners so I'll start with the lower left um, and lower left I'm going to just walk in with my mouse or with my uh, my arrow keys on my keyboard and you want to eyeball this uh, really focus on the area that you're working on because when this comes together you'll see it almost click with your eyes you'll see a lot of flicker and then all of a sudden the flickering will stop so you can kind of see, uh, it's even visible on the camera, the lower left corner looks fairly solid. Um, we'll do the same thing now, lower right corner. And a little bit of a flicker, I'm going to walk it in. So now with all four corners really dialed in with the crosshatch pattern, I'm gonna come back to my three by three pattern. And this gives me a chance to really adjust several new areas that weren't in the pattern before. Uh, center, top, um, top center, left center, right center, and lower center. This will give us a cross pattern that we can kind of adjust. So uh, let's do this in the cooking show format and I'm going to adjust those real quick. And now cooking show format wise, I have my top left, right, and uh, bottom uh, adjusted. Now, it's again, it's kind of hard to tell because the refresh rate on the camera. The trick is really to let your eyes relax. Uh, when you're looking at the lines with um, uh, what you'll see is, you'll see a lot of flicker and a lot of jumping. When you relax your eyes and you actually get both, of, uh, both areas aligned correctly, it will literally just kind of pop and click into place. Um, so yeah, there's no real, real way, sorry, I'm using a cell phone camera. There we go, that's kind of better so we don't have as much flicker. Um, but now I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over. We're gonna take a look at the uh, five by five pattern, which is going to give us several new areas.
So now you see um, we've gotten all the the new areas with the 5x5 five five aligned. Um, I had to go back again because every little adjustment that you make is going to affect the overall image. So as I was making those adjustments, I did have to go back and readjust my corners and readjust my um, top left, right, and bottom centers. Um, but now we've got a pretty good image. Um, not a whole lot of fine tuning I need to do, but it's still worthwhile to point out you know, fine tuning with the nine by nine pattern. Now I've pretty much got geometric capabilities all over my entire grid. So my nine by nine crosshatch, um, now that this is probably the most fine tuned this is going to get, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the top left uh, and kind of go over all the intermediate areas between, um, you know, that have now just been reintroduced and fine tune those. So after a lot of um, persistence and trial and error, we now are ready to up, uh, up and running. This is both zones actually overlapped over each other. Um, you know, so you can see we now we don't have a whole lot of shadowing or, um, you know, it's hard to tell with the, uh, the scan rate again on the phone, but not a whole lot of flicker or anything like that. I mean, it it's a pretty solid image. There's no line doubling or anything like that. Uh, so we're running through all the different Game of Thrones uh, sigils here, you know, for the uh, people that are Game of Thrones fans, um, you know. But overall, that's uh, that's all it really took to you to get that up and going. So hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this tutorial. If you want to learn more about creating laser shows, or if you just want to see some awesome laser content in action, make sure to watch our additional tutorial video share here and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find the latest laser show information online at www.pangolin.com.